My name is Melvin Carter, and I'm here with three hats on. One, I'm the mayor of the city of St. Paul, Minnesota, the second American city to launch a city-sponsored pilot. Um, thank you. Two, I am one of the co-chairs of Mayors for a Guaranteed Income, which is a coalition of, as of today, 100 mayors who have launched over four dozen pilots across our country to demonstrate how this policy works. And three, I'm somebody who can't believe I keep on signing up to talk after they show these videos. <laughs> I don't know how to get through this moment. I think about that meme, how it started, how it's going. For me, this journey started five years ago, sitting at a dinner table with someone who's become a, a, a friend and a brother to me ever since. I was sitting at the dinner, you know, I, I just got elected mayor and I heard these stories about this crazy young mayor off the West Coast. Who, who was you know, making waves with this idea that we could fight poverty by just giving people money. And you know, we knew that was kind of crazy, we knew that was kind of fringe, and we knew we could, we could never really just do that, right? And that's so far off of the beaten path that like, for a city like St. Paul, I'm not sure that we could do that. But I found myself sitting at a dinner table with Mayor Michael Tug. And we chatted and I said, hey, how's the fundraiser going for that uh, uh, guaranteed income thing? And he said, we're done fundraising, we're giving out the money now. And I said, really, that's incredible. Fast forward just a couple of years and we found ourselves in the middle of a COVID-19 crisis in St. Paul. We saw the number of residents in our city sheltering outdoors increase by a factor of 10 in just a couple of weeks. We saw all of a sudden, we saw people losing their jobs, people losing their business, people losing their homes. We saw in the United States of America, if, if, if you hadn't been there, you would think I'm lying. We saw, we've seen people stockpiling toilet paper, stockpiling uh, baby formula. And what all of a sudden comes to mind, and I know Mayor Tubbs said this earlier, what's crazy is not guaranteed income. What's crazy is the status quo we've grown used to. What's crazy is the fact that here we are 60 years into a war on poverty and giving poor people money still feels new. And so here we are, we're committed in St. Paul, and I'm excited about this. Our staff of our, our director of our Office of Financial Empowerment, uh, Munir Karturamos is in the back, and we're committed to this approach to say, we're gonna help make sure that our residents, you know, there's two kind of people. There's people who money is working against, and there's people who money is working for, and our entire goal is to just increase the population of people in our community who money is working for. And so we started this journey with fines and fees. We eliminated late fines in our public libraries and saw library use d increase by double digits in all of our lowest income neighborhoods. We eliminated participation fees for youth sports and today we have a thousand more children on the field are playing sports in our rec centers than we did just last year. We launched, we launched College Bound St. Paul. We have an initiative in St. Paul to start every child born in our city with $50 in a college savings account. I tell moms all the time, if you have a baby in St. Paul and you don't want your child to have a college savings account, well, there's paperwork to fill out. <laughs> Which is true. We've launched a, 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 a zero interest loan program for new Americans to, uh, to, to, to pay the cost of, getting, of naturalization and citizenship. Our goal is to help residents make money work for themselves. And in ju we're just a couple of weeks away from launching our city's fourth guaranteed income pilot. So in 2020, Mayor Tubbs gave me another call. He called me back and said, hey, listen, we're, we're gonna take this show on the road uh, and you know, we want to sign up, we want to think about signing up mayors, creating this mayors for a guaranteed income. Are you in? And of course we were in. And I called Munir, who's in the back, and I said, listen, Mayor Tubbs is first. I just giving you a call to let you know we're going to be second. And we were proud of our role in this space to be able to be the second city pilot, the first to use public dollars. And the reason we use public dollars is because uh, we talk about this in our budget process all the time. My mother growing up would always tell me, no matter where you go to church on Sunday, the book that reflects your values is your checkbook. The book that demonstrates what you value is how we invest our scarce resources. And I think about this. I heard uh, Dr. Hamilton say earlier, this is expensive. I have a college roommate who, when we were in college, uh, was using his cell phone of his, and he really believed in that company. He started investing, 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 and nowadays he's really glad he did, and I'm really glad he didn't tell me about it. I'm really mad he didn't tell me about it. But that's what you do. 
I'm a politi- look, if, you're, if, if we believe in something, the only human response is to invest in it. If we believe in the potential of something, the only human response is to go all in. And so we are going all in with our students, we're going all in with our families, we're going all in with our residents. And listen, our first pilot, 2020, uh, was I think six to eight weeks, something like that, from concept to first payment. And people say, how do you do that? Government usually uses, moves slow, but the truth is, government moves very fast when things are important to us. We have a, a long history of government moving at the speed of light when things are important and valuable to us and our residents are important and valuable to us. So we started this journey in 2020 with a pilot that took 150 families. They're a subset of our college bound, those college savings accounts families that I talked about. So they all had a child born in 2020 into the pandemic. We took a subset of those families, 150 families, and uh, provided a $500 monthly benefit for a period of the year and a half. Uh, we found out what Stockton is finding out. You know, there's all these racist and classist tropes about what those people will do with money if you give them some money. And ultimately what we're finding out is those people spend their money a whole lot like us people do. <laughs> they pay the rent. They get a car fixed up. They put their child in childcare. And it's funny because people say, well, why would anybody work if you're just giving away free money? I've never heard anybody say that who could quit their job for $500 a month. Because <laughs> that's not the way it works. And what we're finding out is quite the opposite, is that just a little bit of money, a relatively small amount of money, can unlock an entire world of potential of lasting impacts to help a family unlock the economic benefit. And so we're doubling down. We did a guaranteed income pilot in St. Paul with the local nonprofit uh, focused on artists. We are, we are launching right now the first guaranteed income pilot focused on refugee families. And again, the, thank you. And uh, next month, we'll start payments for our fourth pilot uh, that'll uh, take 333 families, and it's a partnership between uh, our guaranteed income work and our college savings accounts work. We'll take 333 families, and they will receive a $500 a month uh, unconditional cash benefit for a period of two years and a $1,000 bonus into their uh, deposit into their child's college savings account. And what I found out, Ms. Rose, is what we're doing is not just piloting guaranteed income. What we're doing is showing people that government can work. What we're doing is showing people that government can be relative and relevant in our lives. What we're doing is we are abandoning an old model of city building, an old model of country building, an old mo model of community building that tells us that all you have to do to build a safe community is over-criminalize black and brown youth. That all you have to do to get people around a neighborhood is build roads, just pave over people's homes. That all you have to do to build the economy in a local community is, is, is take all your money and find some business or some worker somewhere else to lure them into your community while our own residents are struggling. And our residents know that we're betting against them. Why don't people trust government? Because government doesn't trust people. They know that we're betting against them. I'm from Minnesota. And so after George Floyd was killed and we saw people in our state and all across the world taken to the streets in protest, we have to know they weren't just protesting police violence. We have to know they were protesting all of the ways in which these systems that we pay into, our government systems, our housing systems, our, our banking systems, our employment systems, our education systems that are supposed to be helping us raise our children just always feel like they have their knee on our neck. And so we're, 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 we're approaching a new model. We talk about equity all the time, and my team hears me all the time say, I'm not interested in the social justice definitions of equity because I went to business school. And when my business school dean said the word equity, she was talking about money. <laughs> when my business school dean talked about equity, she was talking about uh, ownership of uh, transferable and appreciating assets. When my business school dean was talking about equity, she was talking about decision-making power, participation in decision-making power, and she was talking about participation in an economy. Don't you know if I own equity in a company and that company has a good quarter, then I have a good quarter too. And that's what we're talking about. We, we have to have a model of city building. We have to have a model of nation building. That means when our economy grows, when that Dow Jones line goes up, well, somebody has an easier time paying rent. And that's what this is about. This is about a new model of city building that just depends on going all in every day we can to find new ways 
to bet on ourselves, to bet on our children, to bet on our families, to bet on our entrepreneurs, to bet on our ideas, to bet on our community members, and this is where we're going. I know that there are people who look at us, all of us, and say the same thing that I said I said about Mayor uh, Tubbs when we first met. This is pie in the sky thinking. But what's crazy to me is as I look back over the last two years, as I look back over the last five years, as I think about all the ways in which we all have worked together to bring this movement over just the past couple of years, well, we're on a trajectory. And I'll tell you what excites me more than anything is the notion and the possibility that our next five years will be just as active, will be just as transformative, will be just as uh, 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 fundamental in this movement as our last five years are. I know that you all are the ones who carry that ball, and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank our mayor, Mayor Spaganti, and come staff for in, in the room for that. Uh, I have learned working closely with them that I never want to be in a role where I have to wrangle a hundred mayors. <laughs> but I appreciate the work that we all do, and here's my challenge. And I, I, I'm probably running, somebody's going to kick me off this stage pretty soon. But here's my challenge. I know that we're preaching to the choir in this space. But what excites me, that definition of equity I just described to you, really, really, really excites me, and I'm all in on it. And I know we're the ones, you're the ones, who get awards. Uh, Dr. Aisha uh, mentioned that we've been friends for a very long time, so I've gotten her to see her get a lot of awards. I know you are the ones who get the awards. I know you're the ones who people look and say you're doing great work, and I know even when they do that, you go home and go, oh, we could have done a little bit more. How do we do a little bit more? How do we push a little bit harder? How do we help people a little bit more? And the exciting thing for me about that definition of equity that I just mentioned to you is it lets us off the hook a little bit to figuring out how to help people. And it changes our approach to say, how do we get out of the way and let people achieve the amazing, incredible, world-changing potential that truly exists in all of our children. Thank you for that work, and I'm excited to be in it with you.